Medical Falls Pediatrics, Friday is supporting kids in our community in 7 Questions with Emmy. Hey guys, welcome back to 7 Questions with Emmy. Chances are you've read books that my guest wrote. Eric Litwin is the original author of Pizza Cat, The Nuts, Groovy Joe, and The Poop Song. Eric, <laughs> thanks for joining me today. You're very welcome, Emmy. I am happy to be here with you. Uh, let's get started with the questions. Okay. Question number one. What gave you the idea to write children's books like Pete the Cat and your other books? I was a teacher and I was very interested in how my students learn to read. And what I wanted to do was create children's books that optimized the learning in early reading experiences, meaning like your little brother that you spoke of before the interview started, I wanted children about his age to learn as much as possible when they were reading. And I knew that meant they had to fall in love with the character. They had to be really engaged, really involved. And so I added music and movement. And that's how I decided to become a writer. I wanted to put all these elements into children's books. Question number two. What was your favorite thing about being a special ed teacher before you became an author? Helping, there are two things. The first is that I loved helping my students become strong lifetime readers. I, helped, I loved helping them fall in love with books. And then I loved helping them kind of take on a I can do it perspective, a go with the flow. And you'll notice that both of those things are in all my Pizza Cat books and Groovy Joe books and Nut Family books. Lots of just keep walking along and singing your song perspectives. What are some of your favorite children's books and what authors inspire you? Okay. Um, my favorite children's books, I have two favorite authors, but so many books inspire me. Um, I like uh, Bill Martin Jr. Are you familiar with Brown Bear, Brown Bear? Yeah. Okay. Did you read that growing up? Yes. And my little brother reads it. Okay. And I have a son. My son is... Uh, 22 months old right now and we read him brown bear brown bear all the time and i also love books by mo willems uh, i know mo willems yeah he's so good and so those are my two favorite children's book authors um what are your favorite children's books by the way eric litwin ah! <laughs> i like um i like ann and martin she writes Babysitter's Club. Wow. Cool. Very cool. I have a bunch of other lists, but that would be half of the interview. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Many of your books have characters who have to stay calm in frustrating situations. Yeah. What do you do to stay positive? Well, I do many of the things my characters do. I use words. So just like... Pete might say, keep walking along and singing your song. And in the Nut family, they say, keep rolling. I have words that I say to myself also, like stay positive, uh, uh, look, at, look, look at the bright side of things, uh, focus, focus on the positives. I remind myself with words to stay positive. Um, and it's so important. Do you, do you do that, I mean, Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's important that we grown-ups and older children help younger children learn how to do that as well. And that's why I put these messages in my books. What are some ways you suggest to make reading more fun for kids, especially with your son? Well, my focus, as you know, is with young children, right? So I <laughs> am writing books for children who are, you know, around two, well, actually you start reading right when the baby's born right away. So I'm gonna say birth and even we read to our child when he was still in my wife's belly. So you, you know, you, you start reading immediately. So we'll just say birth to age about five or six. So, so I'm going to talk about how to make reading more fun for that age group. Does that sound fair? Yeah. And because here's the reason why, Emmy, it's very different than older children. And it's very different than adults. Because with adults and older children, when we read, we kind of, our imaginations fly and we, and we just, we get engrossed in the book, right? Yeah, and, and like they know how to read and little kids don't know how to read. They're reading differently. They're reading differently. And what makes reading really fun for little children is interactivity. Do you see the way we're talking right now? 
that's what's fun for children too. They want to go back and forth, right? So what we can do is we can ask questions. And um, by the way, it's called dialogic reading, but you don't have to remember that. And in my books, what I do, I just put the questions right in the book. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Was Joe upset? Goodness, no. So we can ask questions and that makes it more fun. We can also add movement, right? I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. We want our reading with young children, and this would be you reading with your, your younger brother. We want it to be as interactive as possible. We want as much rhythm and rhyme because that helps them learn more. And we want to focus on words and we want to read expressively. I um, bet you do this. Yeah, I have a, yeah, I read expressively. <laughs> and I Good. actually have a funny story about Groovy Joe. Okay. Um, that at the library they have like little music like of them singing the songs and me and my brother everett when we were well because i have two brothers so the little one i still read too but uh we're old now and when we were little we would play keep playing the groovy joe songs and he would run around me in circles good <laughs> so it, it is movement i'll tell you that but but i mean it's more than it's yes it's movement but it's movement connected to words right I bet he remembered those words. I bet you remembered those words, and that's building our vocabulary. Also, there's something called phonological awareness. Have you heard of that before? There's no reason why you should have. It's an academic term, and it just means really understanding sounds. And do, isn't music a great way to understand sounds? You yeah. know, because that's what music is. It's sounds and rhythms. So all these benefits of music, the rhyme, the rhythm, we can add these to books. And that's, that's what I do. But look, it doesn't have, it, even if the book doesn't have rhythm, doesn't have music in it, you can add music to it. You could take any of your favorite books, you can build in a song or a chant, just like that, and you can make it interactive. I like the story you told because that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make reading as fun as possible. And you found that you know, you could go online and you found the songs, right? That go with the book. So let's have books and songs and dancing and let's just blend it all together. That's what I like. How many instruments do you play? So um, mostly I play guitar. I played a little banjo for a while, but I, I haven't picked it up in some time. I play the harmonica a little bit. I like to play the harmonica. And uh, uh, I sing. Uh, so those are my primary instruments. Yeah. My little brother, Elliot, uh, he mm -hmm. always is looking up like Pete the Cat videos and stuff. So uh, he'll always find it and he'll see like videos of you reading and playing your guitar. Yeah. Yeah. He, like, so here's a little studio. This is a little travel guitar. And so what I did when I wrote the songs, I tried to keep them kind of rhythmic and I made them really simple. So, so this is just an E chord right here. And I'm going to go from E to an A, but I'm going to make it a little groovy like this. I love my white shoes. 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 You see, so we just add a little bounce, a little rhythm. We make the words come alive, right? And isn't that fun? Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, I love it. I love playing the guitar. I love adding music to books. And I love that this helps children learn to read because it optimizes. It optimizes that moment. And helping children learn to read and be positive is one of the, it, it, it's two of the most important things we can do. What is your favorite thing to do with your family when you are not working? So we like to go for walks. My son, as I said, is 22 months and he is obsessed with garbage cans. Garbage cans and recycling bins. He'd be like, garbage recycling. And he wants to go outside and look for garbage and recycling bins. And then we spot them and it's a great time. So <laughs> you can't make stuff like that up, can you? And so we, we take walks. We look for garbage and recycling bins and garages. We play in the playground. I also like to cook with my family. We make nice meals and we eat them together. 
And I like to play the guitar um, for them, and we all sing together. Where do you guys live at? In Washington, D.C. Oh, okay. So close to New York area, right? Not too far away. I I used to drive, uh, before the pandemic, I, we used to drive into New York City and we would get pizza. We love pizza. When we were in New York, there's a bunch of garbage pile up, so your son would probably like it there. He would be in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Now it's time for some bonus questions. Okay. Hey, Eric. I am ready. Do you want me to call you Mr. Eric or Eric? So, um, you know, I guess it would be good for you to call me Mr. Eric. I guess that's a, a, a good way to go. Okay. Uh, what's the best piece of advice someone has given you or that you have given to someone else? Uh, you know, I think... Um, especially in terms of being a writer. So a lot of people would like to be writers. And um, so a lot of folks ask me my advice on that. And of course, when I was trying to become a writer, I asked people their advice, right? And the advice I was given, which now I give to others, is just never give up. Um, I can, to, for all you aspiring writers out there, I'm now going to show you my first book that was rejected. <laughs> Pete the Cat, I Love My White Shoes, was initially rejected. Here is another book I wrote that was initially rejected. Pete the Cat and His Four Groovy Buttons. Here's another book I wrote that's out now that was initially rejected. The Poop Song. I, everybody gets rejections. It's so hard because you love your book and it's hard, but... You have to remember, it's just circumstantial. It's, and you got to keep trying. You have to have faith in what you've done. You have to believe in your mission and what you're doing and just never give up. Keep, keep rolling, like, uh, like we say in the Nuts book, keep rolling. And it wasn't, now it's not rejected, because look. Yeah. I love my white shoes. Yep. 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 So it was originally rejected, Emmy, but then... We kept submitting them. We kept trying. And um, another thing that happens sometimes is, um, well, just they wanted to make changes. or And that's okay, except sometimes you have to stay true to what you've written. So that's my advice. Never give up. Stay true to what you've written and follow your heart. You can do it. If I did it, you can do it. Uh, will there ever be a follow-up book to the poop song? <laughs> So here's the funny thing. So, you know, the poop song, my, my wife is a pediatric gastroenterologist, okay, which means she is a doctor that works with young children with food coming in and food going out. And she was just saying that there's a lot of stress on families right now when it comes to potty training. And this is because um, when you go to daycare or preschool, they have kind of a schedule that you know, you got to be potty trained by such and such a date. And our children just don't follow these schedules. Yes, my little so, brother, that's three, he does not. He always is sitting on it, but he will never go actually on it. Right. But every child is different. And so the key thing here is to just stay positive, give positive reinforcement, and we can't force it. So um, what was what my wife was saying is some of her patients and the children had gotten in kind of power struggles because you know they were the parents were like well we we have to be potty trained by this time and and what she was saying is it'd be great if there was a book that said hey poop wherever you want but the big boys and the big girls are pooping in the potty so i wrote the book for her for the medical practice but when i performed it live it was so popular in the performances that I submitted it to my literary agent, and then we, we ended up being published by a wonderful publisher, Chronicle Books. And the book is doing so well. And, and just two days ago, I gave a live performance, and it was the best-selling book of the live performance. But the book did come out during the pandemic. So, you know, we all had so many other things on our mind, and it kind of, in all the crisis, it got kind of missed. So I need to get this book to do a little better, and then there'll be a follow-up. But the publisher has already expressed what they want the follow-up to be. 
and I'm going to let you guess what it is, and then I'll tell it's you. It's a peace song? It is not. It is not. It is not. Should I? Maybe I should tell you. I'll just tell you. They want, a, uh, they want the follow-up to be a fart book. So at <laughs> first, I was like, no way. I'm not writing a fart book. And then I'm like, oh, this could be fun. Why not? So I have actually written the book. It's really good. <laughs> It's fantastic. Uh, so we'll see. So, you know, it's, tell everybody you know about the poop song. It really is. It's a really fantastic book. It's great for potty training. It comes with a, a, a potty chart. I'll be using it with my son when he's ready. And um, it's a fun book. It has a fun song. And I think that uh, once we get this book out there and everybody knows about it, then maybe there'll be a follow up and maybe it will be the fart song. When will the fart song come out if everybody knows about it? You know, it's hard. It, it's really, it's hard to say, Emmy. It's, it, these things take a little time. So, you know, the, uh, hopefully the pandemic's coming to some type of end and we will, I, you know, I've begun to do live performances again. I can start to get it out there. Uh, and so, I, I can't say. I wish I could. I wish I could tell you. But let's just hope. You know, we'll stay positive and we'll we'll stay positive and hope there's a, a fart book coming. <laughs> Will you come to Idaho and perform? I would love to. Okay. And I have one more bonus question. Okay. Um, do you have any books, like any plan of any books coming out besides of the fart song? Right, right, right. So at the moment, uh, at the moment, I do not. Um, I'm working on two different concepts right now. Um, you know, I wrote a book for teachers. Are you aware of that? Um, so you may have. So I wrote a book for teachers called "The Power of Joyful Reading," and it's about all the things you and I just talked about. It's about the importance of why young children need to love reading, how we immerse them in reading. So I really enjoy writing books that are professional development books like this one and so i might i would like to do another one and really dive deep even deeper into this topic of joyful reading especially after you right now it is so important to help our students uh, be strong readers and optimistic readers so maybe that and then i'm starting i really feel right now tell me if you agree I think now more than ever, it's important that we have books about staying positive, staying optimistic. And even though I've written so many about that, I feel right now it's time for another one with a fresh voice. What do you think about that? Yes. Yeah, I agree. Because Pete agree. the Cat has a positive message. Maybe yes, like does. a girl. Yes, a girl cat, maybe. Maybe a girl cat. Yeah, Callie why not? the Cat. Callie the Cat. Callie yeah. the Cat. Friend, we can do Callie the cat. You know what? I'm I'm probably will come up with something completely different. But 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 why not a girl cat? And why not? Or uh, what what other animal would you think I could do? Since I've already done a cat, what is an animal that you think would be exciting to write about? Hmm. Unicorn, maybe. Oh my goodness! Imagine how fun that would be, and how imaginative. Or you could do like. Dragon, or a dragon. Mm -hmm. um, this one, uh, a dolphin. I, dolphins are my favorite animal. I would wow. do a dolphin. Wow. These are all such good ideas. I love all these ideas. And I'm going to just think about it and percolate on these ideas. And I'm going to think about characters and messages. And I hope to come out with a really lovely book for everybody. Um, but I can't tell you when that will be. And if you do a dolphin book, you could be like, with an e e e, he got back up and gave his friend a hug or something like that. Yep, yep. with that rhythm, it's wonderful. Uh, thank it's you wonderful. so much for talking with me today, Mr. Eric. You're very welcome, Emmy. Thank you for having me on your program, and I enjoyed your questions and our conversation. Um, make sure you read Pete the Cat books and all of the other amazing books that Mr. Eric has um, written. Um, hope to see you next time. Bye. Idaho Falls Pediatrics, Why are you supporting kids in our community and seven questions with Emmy.